Lord, I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Welcome to the service today, and we trust that God will bless us with his word today as always. I invite you to take part in the call to worship as we read from Psalm 25, verses 1 to 10, and it reads as follows. A prayer for guidance and protection. To you, O Lord, I offer my prayer. In you, my God, I trust. Save me from shame of defeat. Don't let my enemies go close over me. Defeat does not come to those who trust in you, but to those who are quick to rebel against you. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Make them known to me. Teach me to live according to your truth. For you are my God who saves me. I always trust in you. Remember, O Lord, your kindness and constant love, which you have sown from long ago. Forgive the sins and errors of my youth. In your constant love and goodness, remember me, Lord, because the Lord is righteous and good. He teaches sinners the path they should follow. He leads the humble in the right way and teaches them his will. For faithfulness and love he leaves. All who keep his covenant and obey his commands. Amen. Beloved, let's unite in prayer. Eternal loving Father, we thank you for the, your word that is yea and amen. Thank you, Father God, that you give us the wisdom to read it, interpret it, and understand it. Thank you, Father God, for this day. A day, Father God, that you have made so that we can rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, dear Lord, for all the many blessings in our lives, for your mercies which are new every morning. Thank you that you are our Father, who sitteth at the right hand of our Heavenly Father. This morning, Father God, we humbly come before your throne to thank you that we can intercede for others. So we bring those before you this morning who are ill, who are mourning, those who have been affected by the COVID virus, those who have no homes. And we ask, Father God, in your great mercy, to heal, to comfort, and to protect them. We pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you will come and heal our country, our world from this terrible pandemic called COVID-19. We ask, dear God, that you will give our leaders wisdom, knowledge, wisdom and knowledge to do the right thing and to make the right decisions in Jesus' name. We thank you this day, Father God, that you hear our prayers and that you answer them. We ask now, Father God, that you continue to bless us and walk with us. Keep us, dear Lord, in the palm of your hand. We ask all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
morning is recorded in the Gospel according to Saint Mark, Mark 1, verses 9 to 12. And it reads as follows. The baptism and temptation of Jesus. Not long afterwards, Jesus came from Nazareth in the province of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As soon as Jesus came up out of the water, he saw heaven opening and the Spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my own dear Son. I am pleased with you. At once the Spirit made him go into the desert, where he stayed forty days, being tempted by Satan. Wild animals were there also, but angels came and guarded him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Beloved, our sermon today, the theme is the temptation of Jesus. Let's make in prayer that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. The subject today is the temptation of Jesus, beloved. As we found in Mark 1 to 9 and 12, and also Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. Verse 1 says, Then Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted there by the devil. The word temptation is sometimes used to imply a test or trial or can mean to entice and to lead into evil. Examples are found in the Old Testament and New Testament. Genesis 22 verse 1 tells us, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. The RSV puts it in this way. After these things God tested Abraham. Matthew 22 verse 11 mentions the word tempt in the RSV translation. Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Matthew 22, verse 35, asserts that one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, the RSV, Yes, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Every person is tempted by someone or something, beloved, at some point in their life. Even Jesus was tempted according to Hebrews 2 verse 18, where it says, Since he himself has gone, through suffering and temptation, he is able to help us when we are being tempted. This example, however, beloved, provides us with an assurance that we are capable of resisting temptation. And by overcoming temptation, we emerge strengthened in our strength. Temptation is an enticement to sin that arises from human desires and passion. Enticement may also be formed from the devil, which is called the tempter in Matthew 4 verse 3. The Bible states explicitly that God does not tempt us but he does allow us to be tested by circumstances and by the devil so that faith may grow. 
ceremonial, the Lord promises to provide a way of escape so that we are not tempted beyond what we are able to bear. James said that when the tempter's influences is resisted, we must leave. Satan, strategy, potentations, clearly beloved. In the way he dealt with Eve in the Old Testament, firstly, he questions God's word. Number two, he contradicts God by not telling the whole truth. Thirdly, he distorts and misquotes God's word. Beloved, these same strategies were at work in Satan's temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. The Bible promises that who who will stand life's temptation will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. James 1 verse 12. There is no sin in being tempted. Sin, Jesus was so perfect, beloved, in every way, was in all points tempted, like we are challenged and tempted, but yet Jesus was no sin. Christ is able to understand our weaknesses, since he himself has experienced the very same things. No one can truly sympathize for someone else unless he has been through a similar experience or situation himself. As a man, our Lord has shared our experiences and can therefore understand the testing which we endure. However, he can sympathize with our wrongdoing because he never experienced it. He was tempted in every respect as we are, and yet he never sinned. He never gave in to these temptations. It was impossible for Jesus Christ to sin, either as God or as man. As the perfect man, he could do nothing of his own accord. He was absolutely obedient to the Father and certainly the Father would never lead him into sin. One purpose of temptation was to demonstrate conclusively that he could not sin. Temptation, beloved, does not necessitate sinning since we read that when he was tempted he was yet without sin. There are different degrees of temptation, but not even the worst forms of it involve sin. Since he never sinned, Jesus could say, The prince of this world cometh, cometh, and hath nothing in me. John 14, verse 15. The Lord knew that the time for his betrayal was approaching and that he would not have much more time to talk to his disciples. Satan was even drawing nearer to Jesus Christ as an enemy, not as a friend or as a follower. There was nothing in Christ to respond to the devil's evil temptations. It would be ridiculous for anyone else but Jesus to say that Satan could not find any wrongdoing in me. Satan can find and make mistakes in our lives. He can identify our sin from A to Z, but in Christ there was no fault. Temptations can also be beneficiary in the pilgrim journey of the Christian. Number one, it can prove our sincerity, our faith, our love, and our patience. Number two, temptation can bring growth because temptation develops 
and increases our faith in Christ Jesus. Third one, temptation increases our usefulness, beloved. The fourth one, temptation, in temptation we can know the pearl of victory, the taste of victory, and the sensation of victory. The fifth one, temptation can bring glory to God. By us overcoming temptations, through Christ Jesus, that can bring glory to God. Now the key is, to, is found in Jesus' response. What is your response today? How are we responding today? What is your response today? When it comes to temptation, Christ is guiding us, is protecting us, is leading us in this journey. What about us today? Remember too that God's word is the key to fighting temptation. When we like Jesus make our choice to obey God's word, Satan will flee and God will meet our deepest needs. Beloved, Jesus is teaching us something today. God's word is a point of reference as we are responding to our challenges and temptations now for all eternity. Amen. Loving Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we humbly come into your sanctuary, Almighty God and your Father, to honor, praise, and glorify your holy name. We thank you for the privilege that we have in sharing your word here on earth, Almighty God and our Father. And we know that due to COVID-19, the coronavirus, we could not meet as we, as we are used to. But we thank you for uh, the media that you've placed at our disposal and also the people that operated for us. We thank you that they have not grown tired, Almighty God and our Father, and that they keep on doing their task to the best of their ability. We ask for a special blessing upon them and their families and the work that they do, Almighty God and our Father, so that others might benefit from their expertise. Now, coronavirus is still a great enemy, Almighty God and our Father, that is, um, standing like Goliath in front of us and we do not know which way to go because he has not only come in, in, uh, in physical but Almighty God and their Father has also come with a lot of fake news and fake everything about him Almighty God and their Father. Even the South African government was duped into buying uh, medicine or, or vaccines that doesn't work or that's nearly close to expiry date or something like that. But um, through it all, we hold fast onto the fact that you are our provider, and that you will guide, prosper, and protect us, and that we know that we can rely upon you, Almighty God and our Father, because you are the God that knows the end from the beginning. And we know that we are safe in your hands, Almighty God and our Father, because you know our names. You know the hair on our heads you know our fingerprints that differ from person to person you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking but still we come to your throne of mercy jesus christ son of the most high god and ask that you would bless us and that you would hold us in the palm of your hand and just be a god of great mercy towards us now at the beginning of the service almighty god and their father we ask that you will send your Holy Spirit to be with us and to be with everyone that listens to it so that we will be inspired and blessed by it so that we will go out and tell the world that every knee will bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Most High God and no one comes unto the Father except through Him and He is the way and the truth and the life and the gates of hell will not prevail against Him we believe and we trust and we know that no matter what, our lives is in your hands and no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. 
Thank you, Jesus Christ, for your assurance and for your love and for being a God of great mercy towards each and every one of us. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, knowing full well that some of our friends and families and so on has already passed, Almighty God. Still, we come full of hope and full of expectation, knowing that you have already gone the way for us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray with much thanksgiving. We acknowledge you as our Lord, as our Lord and our Savior, our mediator and our advocate and our redeemer. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless, praise, honor, and glorify his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby. Till